Hello, everyone. I'm Beth, and this is Social Leopards. Do you struggle with sleep quality? Are you an insomniac? I'm raising my hand and waving it wildly in the air as I pose these questions. This is totally me. Today, I'm sharing some practical and scientifically based ways to start enjoying better sleep. I'll also be reflecting on what's been working for me, lately at least. Today's featured contributor is Tara Parker Pope who is a Substack.com creator and also founder of the New York Times Well section. She shares a lot of good information on a wide range of wellness topics, and she backs her words with multiple sources, and you'll be able to reference a short list of links in the show notes. I'll be narrating Tara's article as written, but know that these referenced bits will be available to you self-service. And before I start yawning, because I am tired today, I'll begin sharing this article titled Science-Backed Secrets for Better Sleep. Two Gentle Workouts for Better Sleep. The first time I ever wrote about insomnia for the New York Times, I was stunned at how fast it moved up the most read list. I also noticed that many people were reading it around 3 a.m., The experience taught me that people with insomnia or other sleep problems are desperate for answers. Insomnia, which affects 30 to 40 percent of the population, can start in different ways. For some, it's chronic stress, a medical condition, or pain. For others, it's a body clock that's out of sync or a stressful event that conditions the brain to link the bed with wakefulness. Over time, these factors can feed into each other, creating a cycle of worry and performance anxiety that locks people into chronic sleeplessness. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is still the best treatment for chronic insomnia. CBT retrains you to break the cycle of tossing, turning, and worrying about sleep and creates healthier sleep habits that stick. It really does work, but it can be expensive and time-consuming, so it might not be the right answer for everyone. Sleep medications offer a short-term solution, but they come with risks and diminishing returns. Drugs don't address the root causes of insomnia and may actually reduce restorative sleep. In 2019, the FDA issued a chilling boxed warning about popular insomnia drugs like Ambien, Lunesta, and Sonata, noting they can trigger dangerous and bizarre sleep behaviors, including sleep driving, yeek, that have led to serious injuries, arrests, and even death, sometimes after just one dose. A large new study offers some hopeful news for the sleep troubled. Researchers analyzed 22 clinical trials involving more than 1,300 insomnia patients to determine whether certain types of exercise could make a difference. The results showed that when it comes to insomnia, all exercise isn't equal. Yoga and Tai Chi stood out as particularly effective. Yoga was the clear star of the study. Compared with people in control groups, those who practiced yoga slept about 110 minutes longer each night. That's nearly two extra hours. They also fell asleep faster and woke up less often. The studies tested different yoga traditions, but the common thread was that the yoga practice was gentle, not vigorous. Movements were low impact, and every trial emphasized pranayama, regulated breathing, or other breath-based meditation practices. Tai Chi, the gentle flowing martial art, also helped people sleep about 50 minutes longer, and they reported fewer nighttime awakenings. Impressively, Tai Chi's benefits lasted up to two years after the practice ended. Walking or jogging had a different benefit. It didn't extend sleep as much, but it led to the biggest drop in insomnia severity scores, which means that people felt like their insomnia had improved. Feeling like your insomnia is better matters because it reduces stress, restores confidence in your ability to sleep, and improves how you function during the day. 
Other forms of exercise, like strength training and aerobic workouts, helped somewhat but weren't as consistently effective. Why does exercise work at all? Scientists think it helps regulate stress hormones, improves mood, and even boosts brain chemicals tied to sleep. Yoga and Tai Chi, in particular, may calm the nervous system and quiet the anxiety that so often drives insomnia. The takeaway? Being active is linked with better rest. And gentle, consistent movement seems especially effective. So roll out a yoga mat, try a beginner Tai Chi class, or lace up your walking shoes. Speed round of sleep tips. My favorite sleep trick. When my busy mind keeps me from sleeping, I use a method called cognitive shuffling. I start with my dog's name, Sugar. I think of as many S words as I can. Sun, smile, sofa, sandwich. When I run out of S words, I move to the letter U. Umbrella, ukulele, umami. I always fall asleep before I get to G. Cognitive shuffling distracts your brain with random, unrelated words, just enough to pull you out of worry loops, but not enough to keep you alert. Christina Karen at the New York Times wrote a good story about this method. Read more. Go to bed earlier. Staying up past 1 a.m. takes a toll on mental health, no matter if you're a night owl or an early bird. In a Stanford Medicine study of nearly 75,000 adults, late sleepers were up to 40% more likely to develop depression or anxiety. The takeaway, your brain will thank you for turning out the lights earlier. Read more. Try a nappuccino. I learned about nappuccinos from one of my favorite writers, Daniel Pink, in his book, When, The Scientific Secrets of Perfect Timing. Pink calls naps Zambonis for the brain. A nappuccino pairs caffeine with a nap. Drink a cup of coffee, then immediately lie down for a 10 to 20 minute nap. By the time you wake, the caffeine is just kicking in, leaving you more alert and refreshed. Pink suggests timing naps about seven hours after waking, creating a quiet environment, setting a 25-minute timer, and making napping a consistent habit for the best results. Check out Daniel Pink on Substack. Write tomorrow's to-do list at bedtime. A Baylor University study found that people who wrote a detailed to-do list at bedtime fell asleep faster than those who wrote about tasks they had already completed. The more specific the list, the faster participants drifted off. Writing down tomorrow's tasks helps offload mental clutter, reducing rumination, and easing the transition to sleep. Turn off lights for brain and body health. I have always had a tendency to leave hall lights on at night, but I've learned that stray light is bad for your brain. Even low levels of light at night, from a bedside lamp or an e-reader, can suppress melatonin and disrupt circadian rhythms, making it harder to fall asleep. Exposure to dim light at night has been linked in animal and human studies to weight gain, insulin resistance, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and depression. I spoke with Randy Nelson, professor and chair at Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute at West Virginia University, who suggests limiting your exposure to bright light two hours before you want to go to bed. He recommends a paleolithic lighting regime, bright days and dark nights, to keep the body clock aligned and to support better sleep and metabolic health. So at bedtime, turn off the lights, pull the shades, and wear a sleep mask. When you wake up, Take a morning walk in the sun and bask in bright light during the day. Dr. Nelson recommends outdoor walks, especially if you're stuck in low-level office lighting. A walk in the morning, you're just going to feel better, he said. And if you're working in low-level office lights, you're going to be in perpetual jet lag. Dog somnia is totally worth it. One of the most popular stories I wrote during my tenure at the New York Times was about dog somnia, which is the sleep loss that results from sleeping with your dog. 
it's real, but a Mayo Clinic study that tracked the sleep of people and their pet dogs found that dog somnia only amounts to about 15 minutes of lost sleep per night. Dog lovers will be glad to know that your presence doesn't seem to disrupt your dog's sleep at all. The researchers found that the dogs slept just fine no matter where they were. And notably, when the dogs did awake at night, they squeezed in about two minutes of playtime before settling back down. Read the story. The end. Again, check out the show notes to read the referenced stories or to check out Daniel Pink's Substack account in addition to Tara's newsletter, One Day Better. Okay. The first statistic that kind of shocked me when I first read this article was that 30 to 40 percent of the population struggles with insomnia issues. That was a bit higher than I thought it would be, and so it surprises me that the medical community isn't more dialed into this issue. More on that in a moment. When I say I struggle to fall asleep, I'm not exaggerating. I force myself to lie down and be in the dark, but it's often upwards of an hour or so before I am finally unconscious. I had to stop peeking at the clock because that just makes it worse. And to watch that time slip away, I think that just makes it even harder to fall asleep. My other issue is that at a very personal level, my loving husband can fall asleep in way under five minutes with extreme consistency. Even if he falls asleep in his easy chair while we're watching TV before going to bed, he can still hit the pillow and be out like a light in no time flat. And that, to be honest, lights a bit of an envious fire for me. (laughs) Sometimes I'm lying there just wishing I was him in certain moments. Now, he also snores, which impedes my ability to fall asleep sometimes. But luckily, I found some earplugs that work eh, about 90% of the time. But I digress. I actually started doing the whole cognitive shuffling exercise. While it's not quite as effective for me as it is for Tara, I do find that my mind sort of starts to slow down and I stop churning through random thoughts of earlier today or what the plan is for tomorrow, and I focus in on this word game of sorts. I've always been a fan of word games, so that's probably another reason that it appeals to me. I start losing focus, and then that leads to falling asleep for me. I will notice that my mind starts to drift, and then eventually it kind of just drifts away into nothingness. And then the next thing I notice is that my bladder is full, and that's like three hours later, and I'm up for that reason. Little over disclosure, but I know it's a thing for a lot of people, especially, once again, people of a certain age. I have talked to my or I had talked to my previous doctor about my inability to fall asleep and stay asleep, and she kind of blew me off. And she just told me it's something a lot of people deal with and that it comes with getting older. And that was it. Not inconsequentially, I have a new doctor now, and this one actually listened to me. She did prescribe something, and that helped me a little. And then I started a bit of a weight loss journey. Yes, folks, I am on the GLP-1 train at the moment. And the nurse practitioner working with me as part of that weight management program suggested progesterone capsules because the sleeping medication I was taking works best on an empty stomach. And if you've ever taken a peptide, you know that it slows down the digestion rates, so your stomach is rarely empty. And so that makes that sleep medication less potent, I'm guessing. The progesterone, I'm still on the fence about that. I need to do some more research before I start taking that regularly. I tried it during the summer months when I'm a lot more active. And so all of a sudden I went cold turkey again and it wasn't as bothersome and I seemed to be doing better. As Tara noted, maybe the increase in activity was the factor there. Now, What really excited me after reading this article was the evidence that yoga and Tai Chi were so effective. I struggle with yoga a little due to an old ankle injury, but I have been looking into Tai Chi. And it's also highly recommended for people of a certain age. So that's at the top of my personal list at the moment. I've also been seeing some reels that show some of those Tai Chi movements that appear to be gentle enough that I may be able to keep up and actually succeed at doing it. 
Moving on to the topic of activity being helpful as it relates to me personally, my relationship with vigorous exercise, well, it's not good. I do love swimming, and I can get some decent activity in the pool, but of course that's only during the warmer months. As the summer faded into autumn and now we're right around the corner from winter, Tai Chi looks like my best bet to double up on my journey to achieve a better night's rest. (laughs) Wish me luck on that. Two more things I've worked on to fall asleep. Gonna admit, with some success, but again, not a miracle-level solution, are meditative in nature. I either listen to something on the Calm app. That's not an advertisement for Calm. I just use the app to help me out on a particularly non-restful night. And also focusing into the sound of my own breathing. That helps me the most when I'm wearing earplugs, actually, because then I can hear my own breathing a lot better. I do find that that listening to and just trying to focus in and focus on nothing but the sound of your breathing that kind of also helps my mind start to drift and that sort of leaves me feeling more relaxed and ready for sleep. The last thing I need to work on, I think, is getting used to wearing a sleep mask. I haven't had a lot of luck with that so far. It's distracting for me rather than helpful. I just, I don't like the feel of it. I don't like the feel of my eyelashes against the sleep mask. You know, that there was the statement in the article that the dark room is another key to the deeper sleep. In my bedroom, we do have blackout curtains, but there's still a little ambient light. There's like this little red light on the TV that lights up a section of the room. And then there's a clock that I moved over to my hubby's nightstand, but that still emits a little bit of light. So it's not pitch black in there. I did see on Amazon or something, something came across my phone, a random ad, And it had like a special sleep mask that gave you more, they had little cups around your eyes so that you wouldn't feel anything up against your eyeballs or eyelids. And so I think I might try that. Anyway, in summary, I suppose I feel hopeful that a better, more restful sleep is in my future. I am encouraged by the variety of options presented in this article alongside my personal experiences. I did appreciate that I'm totally not an outlier, and I'm not alone in this journey slash struggle to find the perfect sleep routine. I hope that if you're in the same boat as I am, you did find at least one helpful suggestion today. Thanks one last time to Tara Parker Pope for agreeing to be today's featured contributor. Okay, time to move on to next week. I'll be featuring Skip Concavan. He writes about how a move from Boston to rural Oregon changed a lot about how he views life. It was actually hard to choose which of his stories to share. You don't have to be someone who has migrated from one end of the country to another to find relatable wisdom in what he has to share about how he views life and how he discovers things about himself as he relates to his community. I'm looking really forward to sharing it with you. Until next week, take care.